Hi, and welcome to Debt Tell. This is Rebecca Bautista, and today we're gonna to be talking about how much debt I have. Well, how much debt between me and my husband. If you're curious, at the very beginning of making this channel, I made a channel intro video, which you could find here, where I said that I would talk about me and my husband's real numbers, and I haven't actually done that yet. So today, the last day of the year, we're gonna talk about how much debt we're going into for 2023 so let's get started all right so surprise we have debt it's something that some people have some people don't and something that we're working on but it's not our number one priority being debt free is nice and something we are striving to get to but we like to spend our money for what we value like family vacations having time to ourselves being able to afford not working as much or being able to afford not working either due to health or an emergency. So going into 2023, we have a total of $120,305.72. Let's break that down. The bulk of our debt is to student loans. That is $100,631.50. Assuming that the student loan debt forgiveness goes through, then 30,000 of that will be wiped away. So fingers crossed that happens, but if it doesn't, that's okay because we are capable of paying our student loan payment and are able to pay more should we need to. Right now we have taken advantage of not paying our student loans because we were using that student loan payment to bulk up our emergency fund, which if you haven't noticed in the past couple of years, the world has been a little bit crazy and we have had to dip into our emergency fund multiple times. A couple instances of having to use our emergency fund was having children, where we were able to have paternity and maternity leave without being stressed out. Then there was also the failing health of my father to the eventual passing of my father, which required me to take off a lot of time. And then there were just various illnesses between cold, flu, and COVID. So whenever any of those instances happen, either myself or my husband or both of us were unable to work at the time. And as 1099s, our whole income relies on us actually doing our work. There's no salary. It's all based on what we're doing. And so it's very important for us as a family to have emergency funds because we know that we regularly dip into them. And life, especially in our experience, we usually have one or two things like really major happen in a year and then we'll be good for a couple years and then another major thing will come and it's just like a snowball. Next on our debt is credit card debt. Surprise, we actually normally pay it off but we knew that we were going to have a big purchase this year and so we decided to put some things on our credit card and we have a plan to pay them off within like the first or second month of the year but just in case it is one thousand one hundred and twenty one dollars and eighty nine cents and lastly the big purchase of the year that we had to make that we weren't anticipating was actually getting another car so let's talk about this Originally, we were a two car household with two paid off cars, and then this happened. Back in April, we totaled our car, well, one of them, and we had to go down to one car. It was doable, but that caused us to have a decrease in income because between the two of us and we were working at separate jobs at the time, that meant I had to go and drive us around as well as go to work and drop off. And with that, I was working less, so we were making less money. Then I switched jobs. Now my husband and I work at the same place where our commute now is the same, which is great, so we can carpool, but we still only have one car and we have kids that we have to pick up so once again we're still in this where we can't work as much as we normally would now that was great and we thought it was gonna work out and then that car ended up needing more repairs so the money that we got for crashing the Subaru was used to repair the minivan that we had and then once again we found out that minivan required more repairs which was gonna cost more than what the car was worth and because we are down to one car and we need a reliable car we ended up trading it in for a slightly newer and less mileage version of the same car that 
put us in debt for a total of $18,552.22. So not bad. And something that we plan on paying off fairly quickly, especially because once again, we are currently taking advantage of not paying our student loans. So we can take that extra money and throw it towards debt, or we can also split it. Right now we are debating between splitting it and rebulking up our emergency funds because we actually used up our emergency funds, well, a portion of it towards buying this new car to have a lower payment because again, we need a car in order to work and without working, no income comes in. Next year, we're anticipating again, some more debt. We're not afraid of it because we know that by incurring more debt, it gives us more opportunity to make more income. So next year, we are planning on getting a second car finally. And by doing this now, it will allow both my husband and I to work more hours, which will allow us to make a bigger dent in our goals in terms of both savings and paying off debt. Now you're wondering, well, don't you guys have a mortgage? No, we don't. We actually currently rent and we will probably continue renting for the foreseeable future. So that is something down the line that once again, we're expecting to have more debt, but we always make calculated risks where we think about, all right, what are we getting? What is the value of going into this debt? What will it allow us to do? And how can we pay it off sooner than whatever the loan terms are? That's basically it, which is that even as a financial coach, I still have debt and I'm totally okay with it because I have a plan in place where I know that I can pay it off sooner. And if I really wanted to, I could even pay it off faster. It just depends on, again, what's currently going on in our life situation is worth the struggle because for us, budgeting is something that allows us to see where our money is going and have our spend aligned with what we value. Right now we don't value being debt free, but if we want to value being debt free, we can make it work. And so it's just a matter of talking to ourselves and figuring out what for this time period is important for us. So I hope that is helpful. I will be doing more regular updates now that I finally had a chance to do this. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful New Year's. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.